Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to start our unit on data and statistics. You should have had some of this in sixth grade, so hopefully a lot of this will be a review. Um, there's a lot of terms that you're going to have to define here to understand it, so make sure that you uh, listen and you get down all of your terms. Our objective today, we're going to look at how to use samples and surveys to organize data and to make predictions. So this would be um, if there's a question you want to ask a group of people, you would go out and you would get some data that you need, and then you're going to have to figure out what does this data mean or how can I put it together and figure out what that means for me. That's what we're looking at right now. So we're going to start out by defining our terms. Um, we already used the word survey, so it would be good if we knew what that was. And when we say a survey, we're simply talking about an examination of a public opinion, attitude, or behavior. So you pick something that you want to know. You could go to the mall and ask people, do you believe in God? That would be a survey. You would get yes, no, or I'm not sure are going to be your three main responses you could get. And from there, you could try to analyze that data and what it says about our population as a whole. Um, population, that's simply what we're talking about, a group of people or things. So when we're going out, um, when we, it's the same as what we'd use in geography when we say population, everyone that's on the earth, that's what we're talking about, the population, except we might be looking at a specific population. If we were going to look at something um, for our school, the population would be all the people within the King's Christian School, that kind of idea. So population is just a large group of people. Um, from that population, what we're going to look at is just simply a sample. Um, and let me just put that back in case you missed that and I didn't move out of the way. There you go. Should give you enough time to pause it and get those if you missed them. <laughs> um, obviously, if we wanted to take a uh, sampling, uh, if we wanted to get some information, um, asking the entire population would be impossible. There's just too many people. That's too much data. So instead, we're going to use what we would call a sample, meaning a chosen section from the population, just a small part that we can use for our purposes to find out what it is that we want to know. Um, a re representative sample means we've chosen a sample or a portion of our population that has similar characteristics to the, to the whole. So, for example, if we were going to use the King's Christian School as an example, a representative population means we're going to get an equal number of children from each grade that we're asking. We're going to ask teachers. We're going to ask some staff members, some administrators, some members of the board, um, just to make sure that we have a good sampling of everyone within that school. So you'd want to make sure you have a few of each. That would be a good representative population, meaning I didn't just ask seventh graders or I didn't just ask teachers because that's kind of a biased one, and we'll get to that word in a minute. Um, a random sample is simply a sample where everybody has an equal uh, amount of chance of being chosen. For example, a random sampling would be if I were to put everybody's name into a hat and pick a name at random to call on you. Very random. Everybody has an equal chance of being chosen for that. Make sure you get those down. Um, another type of sampling we can have is what we would call convenient sampling, and it's exactly what it sounds like. I'm asking the people that are convenient to ask, the people who are right there and are who are easy to get. So, for example, if I was going to take a convenient sampling, I might give all of you in my class, since you're stuck here and can't leave, um, the survey that I wanted answered. That was convenient for me. I didn't have to go anywhere. You were all right here. You have to do it so you don't fail. See? Convenient. Um, the other word that I just used, which was bias, uh, a bias is simply anything that favors a particular outcome. You can have biased questions. Um, a biased question would be, did you like the Hunger Games instead of maybe what's your favorite book? I'm already kind of giving you a suggestion as to what you might like. So anything that might kind of push a person towards a certain response, that would be what we call a bias, meaning we're favoring one outcome or we're leaning towards a certain outcome. So, for example, we're going to look at the best way to choose a sampling of people um, that's going to give us a best representative sampling rather than without a bias. So these ones we want to look at, and we want to figure out what's the best way to get a random sampling um, where I'm going to get a pretty good representation of them. So if I wanted to find out teen music preferences, I have two options. Should I attend a classical choir recital, or should I enter a music store? Well, if you think about this here... I'm going to wind up with a bias, right? If you're attending a classical choir recital, that probably means you like classical music. So this, this question right here, or these, uh, this sampling of my population, would give me a bias. And then I might say, oh, well, lots of kids like classical music, which is not necessarily true, but the children who are in the classical choir like that. 
So my best bet to get a better, truer understanding of the music that they like would be to just stop at a music store. I'm not picking any specific genre. I'm not standing by the country music. I'm not standing here. Just as children or as teenagers enter this store, I'm going to ask them, what's your music preference? I'm not going to give options. I'm not going to say, hey, is country your favorite? Um, I don't want to give them a bias. So the best random sampling here, just randomly pick people in a music store. That'll give you a better idea of what everybody likes. All right, our second example. Um, if we wanted to find the most popular uh, museum exhibit, what's the best way for me to find out um, unbiased or a random sampling of people here? Should I ask people as they exit the museum, or should I ask several people who are at the space exhibit? Well, uh, people are already at the space exhibit. That's probably something that they enjoy. So again, here we see a bias. Um, if I ask people who are at the space exhibit, even if it's not their favorite, they might be more likely to say that just because they're there. Um, or it might be their favorite, they specifically went to see it. So that would be a very biased way of getting it. Whereas just as people randomly exit, if I'm asking them, they can stop, they can think about everything that they've seen. Um, and it would be better for me to get them on the way out than the way in because there might be something specific they were going to see and then they found out they enjoyed another one later. So those are things you want to think about when you're talking about um, your sample and how you're going to choose your sample. You really want to examine, is this a biased sample? Are these people going to have a certain preference already? Or am I getting a truly random sampling? Because we want it to be representative because what we want to use that data for is to make predictions based on the information that we have. All right. Um, when we're getting that data, how are we going to collect that data? Well, there's a specific way that we want to go about collecting this data here. Um, one thing we can do is what we call a frequency table. And this is just a way that we're going to gather data. And I will show you what one looks like here. This simply shows the number of times each response was chosen. And don't worry, I'm going to flip back and forth between these two boards. So this is what a frequency chart would look like. Generically, you're going to put your title and your response in here. Whenever you're making any kind of chart, you always want to make sure that you have a title on it. Okay? So the title or the question I was asking. Then we're going to list our different options that we have over here. So here I've given you an example. The question was, should bicycle lanes be placed on most streets? Well, there's three responses they can have. Yes, no, or I don't really care. So what I would do is I would just randomly go up and ask people, and as I got a response, I would just make a tally mark. Oh, this person said yes, I'll give them a tally mark. This person said, who cares, I put a tally mark here. Another one said yes, one said no. So as you're asking, you're just making tally marks to keep track of who said what. That's the beginning part. I'll come back to that, don't worry. All right. But when we refer to frequency, uh, what we're talking about is the number of times uh, each response appears. So again, you'll notice, if we look on the chart, I have one that says frequency. Now, tally is really the same thing, but the tally is what I'm doing as I'm asking. So I'm not trying to keep a number in my head. I'm just making tally marks. So to get my frequency, all I'm doing is counting up my tallies when I'm done asking the question. So after I've completed this question, I'm going to count 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 46, 47, 48. 48 people said yes. I count up my tallies. I see that 20 said no and that 12 had no opinion on the subject. So that's the frequency. How many people said each response? That's our frequency. The last thing, um, and you might have seen it over on that chart, is called the cumulative frequency. The cumulative frequency is the running total of how many people I asked. That helps me know how many people I've asked altogether, because really your best data, your most informative data, has lots and lots of information in it, you want to get quite a few people. You can't really draw a conclusion from only asking two people. So here you'll notice my cumulative frequency is the last column. So I had 48 responses here. Now I'm adding the 20 to the 48 I already had. So at this point I had 68 people total responding, plus the 12 no opinion, which means I asked a total of 80 people should bicycle uh, lanes be placed on most streets. So based on this, we can then start to draw some conclusions, which we would call predicting our population response. So what we're going to do is we said we only have a small sample. I asked 80 people. That's obviously not an entire population. That's a sampling of a population. So based on the people I asked, what I want to do is predict 
how many people in the entire population would also go along with these ideas or agree with uh, the, the information that I got. The way we're going to do that is we're going to set up a proportion, which you know how to solve for now. So I'm going to start out with the yes responses that I received to the question over my sample or my total number of responses. That's going to be equal because we're assuming that the population should be proportional to my sampling. Um, so I can solve for my total yeses that I have in a population if, I've given, if I'm given the size of the population. So we're going to try one right here based on the information in the last chart, and don't worry, I'll go back to it. So in a population of 4,000, how many yes votes would you predict for people who want a bicycle lane? So I'm going to come back here now, and I'm going to see that, well, how many people said yes? 48 people said yes, they would like to see a, a bicycle lane in the sample that I chose. Of those 48 people, um, 48 of those people out of the 80 that I uh, had interviewed. So 48 out of 80 people said yes. So I don't know what that looks like for my population, but assuming the community that I'm asking in has a population of 4,000, about how many people do I think would say yes? Well, all I have to do is set up my proportion here, and then you all know how to solve proportions at this point. We're going to cross multiply and divide, and yes, I have my handy dandy calculator only because we're dealing with giant numbers now. And then remember, we just divide by 80. So I would assume that there would be about 2,400 yes votes in this population based on the information that I got from the random sampling I took. So all we're doing is simply taking a look at what we got um, proportionally in part and applying it to a whole. I'll give you one more example of that. Um, so. In a random sample of 60 shoppers, so my sample size, my bottom number, we've asked 60 people while we were in the mall. Um, if in a random sample of 60 shoppers, 12 said they only buy sale items. So 12 out of 60 will only purchase something if it's on sale. If there are 3,000 shoppers at the mall today, obviously I'm not going to ask them all. I don't have time for that. Um, predict how many are only going to buy sale items. So I'm setting up my proportion. What I do know from my sample, part to whole, part to whole for the population. So about how many do we think would then um, only buy stallions? So again, we're going to cross multiply. Okay. If I can hit the right buttons. And then, actually, you know what? Probably could have done that one in my head. And I find that probably about 600 people um, in the mall, based on the information that I have, uh, are only going to buy sale items simply by solving my proportion. So we can use what we find out in our sampling to make predictions for what the whole population would do. Um, you can see where this could come in handy for life. Um, again, that's it for this video. If you're confused, go ahead and rewatch the video. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, ask me in class. Post um, a question in the comments uh, under YouTube uh, or even ask on your quiz. Have a great day.